Hi guys, Samantha from Dressing My Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you an easy tutorial to create a cute panda earring. So what you're going to need, and this is a must tool for this project, is a panda stencil. And I sell one of these on my Etsy shop. And you can see that there are multiple panda designs on this along with a little bit of bamboo down this side. So the one that we're going to be using is this one over here because it fits my round circle quite well and we're going to be using just a little bit of our bamboo as well. Okay so that's just a must have for this project. Then another thing that you're going to need is clay. And So I'm using Primo Granite and Primo White and I want to mix roughly equal parts and this does not have to be accurate just roughly equal parts so essentially like that. Mix those together and you'll come out with the piece of uh, clay colour that we're going to be using. Okay, and here is what you should end up with. Now we want enough to make two earrings, so I'm just going to cut this in two. And you want to make it at least a millimetre thick. So just put one to the side for the moment. And then just check that that fits you round. And this is the small circle cutter in my large circle cutter set. And then you're going to need also the small circle cutter in my small circle cutter set. And I'll provide links to that. Or you could just buy the whole set, it's actually cheaper. Alright, then you lay down your panda stencil. And you can either leave it like that, or you can burnish it on. And that is what I'm going to be doing because I want it to have a raised texture okay and make sure that you burnish this on well okay. and actually what I should have done before doing that lift this up. I actually need to have this on a piece of paper because I need to make sure that my backing looks nice as well because we only want to be doing one cut. So make sure that your stencil is on a piece of paper before doing that instead of a tile and then burnish it down. And make sure that it's burnished down well because you want it to stick to that base piece of paper. Okay. Right now for the next step you can either use black liquid clay or you can use black paint. I'm going to be using uh, Sculpey's Black Liquid Clay and now the reason I prefer to use uh, Black Liquid Clay is simply because you only need to do one coat whereas with the paint you might need to do a few coats um, and also you don't need to worry about sealing it because paint you might need to seal because it can get scratched off whereas the Black Liquid Clay it's clay so it's just going to stick to your base clay after a bake. Just apply a fair amount and try not to get it on this other bit of the stencil here. And apply a nice thick layer so that it is pure black. Like so. Checking that I've got everything. Right. Then we're just going to lift that up. There we go. And some areas um, came unstuck. So for instance, you can see over here by the eye and by the mouth, we've had a little bit um, of the liquid clay come up. Sometimes it does that, it doesn't do it very often, but it did do that now. So just take a bit of that liquid clay that's still left on your stencil and a skewer and just gently apply it. And this is why I like to have a raised texture because if I made a little mistake, I can very easily rectify it. You can just go with it and just do a gentle 
touch up like so very easy and that will solve any issues that you might have so just check through see if it's all correct and if it is then you can cut it out and now you want to position this in the middle okay then once it is in the middle press down firmly on all sides okay and it will gently stick in the stencil because it is on a paper backing you can use your finger or preferably a smaller object such as the base of a skewer to gently poke it out without touching the liquid clay. Okay. Then you want to put that to the side. Okay. And you'll repeat, you'll make another one. And now we're going to move on to making our little piece. Now you can see that our stencil has liquid clay on it now. Very easy to remove. And just make sure you do a good job of that because that can appear on your next one. So it's just essentially around those edges you want to be careful. Okay. Then you'll take over the leftover clay that was cut out from your piece. Roll that out again to two millimeters thick. Just be really quick and easy to do. And you don't need a lot of clay for this next step. Grab a piece of paper again, take that, and I'm just going to gently burnish that down. Okay, then we're going to take this place it down. And then burnish. Now I want to just talk about a small trick as soon as we've done this. Okay, there we go. Alright, then we're going to take some pastels. And these are the pastels that I like to use. This is the brand. So you can see there. So you can see the box colour and everything. Now I'll open that up. I'm going to take a little bit of a bright green and more of a mossy green. We're just gently gonna pop that over the surface. Then I like to pounce it on so that it creates a uh, mottled effect rather than one solid colour. Okay, and this is the area I'm going to be focusing on because this is where I'm going to be cutting out. So just pounce until you get it so that there's no white left. <gasps> okay, then I'll just brush over once in one direction. Lift up. And then you'll just take the cutter that you want, position it in the middle and cut it out. And so you should end up with something like this. And that will go with your other piece. Okay, now a little trick that I want to talk about. And this isn't necessary, you don't have to do it. But it's just a little something that I find that you can do. Uh, let me just find a clean piece of paper because I don't want to be using this again because it's got lots of um, stuff on it. Here we are. This. Okay. So let's bring over our other piece of clay. Now essentially what you would just do with that is you would just take your stencil again and you would put it down. But what if you want to reverse? It's very easy to do that with a stencil. You just turn it over and you put it down. It will give you a reverse of the image. And I think that would be quite cute for earrings. So you have a reverse of your panda and you can have a reverse of your bamboo, which is what I am going to do. It's something optional, don't have to do it, it's just an idea uh, that I wanted to present to you. Okay, and here is how they look now that I have finished uh, putting them together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bake them for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature um, on a piece of paper so that they are baked. 
properly and so that the backs don't have any uh, shiny spots. Now keep in mind uh, Sculpey black liquid clay is going to leave a matte finish so if you want a matte finish use that liquid clay however if you want a shiny finish a good uh, liquid clay to look into would be Kato black liquid clay however I think that the matte finish is going to look the best that's just my opinion anyway but if you wanted a shiny finish look into the black Kato liquid clay that gives a very nice shiny finish so I'll go pop these into the oven and then we'll see what they look like when they are done okay and so they are out of the oven as you can see and so now we are ready to just clean them up a bit so we're going to start with this one and you can see that the back needs a little bit of a sand so what we're going to do is we're just going to take some sandpaper and this is just 1200 grit and it's wet and I'm just going to sand the back lightly just to bring down that edge that's on it we don't need to sand away a lot so just use that to sand along the edge and it's going to give it a light matte finish And just repeat with the others what I am doing here. There we go. Then you also want to just sand along those edges. And that will just um, take off any sharp points that might be there. There we are. Nice and tidy and easy. Then just clean that off with a little rag. And there we are. All clean. So you can see first is this one edge and back. Looks quite nice and clean. So I'll repeat with these ones. Okay. And now that they're tidy, we want to drill holes in them. So for these ones, we're just going to drill a hole at the top. And I always drill after baking because it leaves a neater hole uh, and doesn't distort the shape. And these push drills are very safe, there's no um, danger with them. Okay, and I just want to decide how I want that to hang. We're going to drill it right here next to the stem. So you can see it's very quick and very easy. Then just drill a hole at the top again. There we go. And then that is essentially all you need to do. And now we can just link everything together to create our earring and repeat with the other one. Okay, so I'm going to be working with some brass jump rings. I'm going to need three and an ear wire. So just grab a jump ring. And actually, I'm only going to need two. Don't need three. Okay, and I want to see if this one is big enough to fit through both of these. Yeah, then just twist that inside there. And there you go, they link together nicely. Then string that through the top. And we are going to need a spare jump ring to orientate our ear wire right. So yeah, I didn't need to do that. There we are. Very easy to make, very organic, and um, we'll basically go with anything. So I'm just going to go and do these two now. And there we go. All finished. So these are very easy earrings, and again, you can see how that um, reverse 
uh, really adds a little bit more interest to it so it's uh, interesting that you've got the reverse image it's something you can do if you want but again you don't have to do it uh, keep in mind you can use paint instead of black liquid clay but I did explain why I prefer to use liquid clay instead of paint and you can use this uh, with just about any stencil you want it doesn't necessarily have to be that specific panda stencil but I thought that it was a nice theme to go with with the earrings so that's why I did it so hopefully you like that project please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below keep in mind that this project is great to sell at markets it's very easy um, Without bake time, I'd say that the actual amount of work that it took me to make these two earrings was probably 15 minutes. So very easy, um, very difficult to make mistakes again, um, and so it's nice market jewellery uh, that you can sell. So keep that in mind. It also makes really great gifts. So uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you have questions. I will answer them as best I can as soon as I can. And if you would like to keep this channel going with tutorials like this, be sure to become a patron a member on my patron membership. I release tutorials every single month and they are a little bit more complicated than the ones that I post on YouTube with uh, more advanced techniques, so keep that in mind. And also you'll get a 20%, you can get up to a 20% discount on my Etsy shop where I sell cutters, stencils, texture stamps, all sorts of things, so keep that in mind as well. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.